Hello everyone. Uh, today we will, be, we will be looking at an aircraft model, aircraft wing model. This wing simulates the assembly of the wing to the fuselage and predict what vector factors may affect the engine, ground clearance and wing tip displacement. So here you can see few examples of very low ground clearance and you can see here that the engine uh, bottom of the engine is made flat instead of round just to get an extra bit of ground clearance this you can see uh, this is how the v5 version of ketia v5 version of 3dcs software looks like at the end of the, this powerpoint i will be give, uh, showing a small demo video of how the model and the software looks like so you can see this model was uh, not built with actual data and few realistic assumptions were made like uh, material properties of the wing, uh, assembly sequence, all the tolerances used, weight of the engine and few others. So if you, if you see two points here, these, these are the measurement points. These will, this, these will represent the ground clearance measurement and this point at the end of the tip will represent the wing tip displacement. So now we will be looking at few of the factors they, that may have an effect on the ground clearance and wing tip displacement. So first factor that may have an effect on the wing tip displacement is the effect of gravity. So here you can see the measurement numbers, measurement numbers of around 30 mm and uh, 6 mm on the wing tip and the ground clearance. So this this tells us that uh, wing di displaces around 30 mm due to the weight of wing and the engine. In the, in the picture here, you can see a color contour of the displacement on the wing. So within 3DCS, at any moment, at any moment on the assembly sequence, you can export a displacement file and see a color map per part. So this, this shows the color map of the displacement on the wing. So the second factor, second factor we thought that could affect the measurements is the position of engine. So here you can see our engine wa was first at nominal position and then we tried three different uh, positions of the engine and uh, measured its effect on the tip displacement and ground clearance. So these are the three positions. Min, nominal and max so if you see the measurement numbers you can see uh, at main position the tip displacement measurement reduced by just 0.3 mm and at max position the tip displacement increased by 0.36 mm so we can see we can say that uh, the position of the engine doesn't really matter and doesn't really affect the measurements at the tip displacement. You can you see uh, you see these big big numbers for the ground clearance at min and max position, but that's just because of the shape of the wing. As we move along the wing, because the reference point for the ground is just constant, uh, the ground clearance increases or decreases. Just to uh, give a point that. Uh, the engine movement of engine doesn't really affect the tip, tip displacement. Yeah, or the ground clearance. So till now we were just looking at the results with perfect parts, th which means there were no tolerances included, and the results were just the nominal build results. There were no simulations ran, and uh, no variation was included. So the third third effect we include is we include tolerances or we include imperfection in the parts 
so all these parts you s all these points you see are the tolerance points and we uh, all these points have a linear independent surface tolerance of 5 mm and again that number was just an another assumption so now that we know that uh, the position of engine doesn't have any effect on the measurements so we went back to nominal position of the engine and ran our results with the uh, tolerances so these results uh, include the effect of gravity as well as the tolerances so you can see there there's a big difference between the nominal numbers and the uh, variation numbers one thing important to note is uh, these numbers are the range value of ranges and these are the just the nominal values Uh, the picture here is uh, from the actual DCS results and gives us all kind of values like min value, max values, uh, nominal values and it gives us, it tells us how many runs were run. So we ran 2000 samples, uh, estimated low, estimated high and estimated range. We, we are looking at the values of estimated ranges. Another good information that this this uh, simulation result gives us is that it lists all the contributors affecting the measurements. So from the list you can see you can find out the top contributors affecting the measurement and uh, you can start working on uh, on them and looking into them. So from from the list we can see the first seven contributors is the same uh, tolerance and it affects about 99% of the variation. That tolerance is uh, the black box tolerance on the fuselage which was 5 mm. So what we did is uh, now that we know that the main contributor is the fuselage uh, tolerance which is 5 mm we did another study or another tolerance scenario with a lower tolerance of 3 mm so once you find out the main contributor you can start working on it if it's a tolerance you can start reduce you can look into uh, how to reduce the tolerance by either including a fixture are uh, improving the design or improving the quality of the parts so ju just to make the model simple we ran another set of results with a tolerance of 5 m 3 mm instead of 5 mm so here are the results uh, another thing about 5 mm results is that uh, you you set your spec limits and if it's uh, if the results are outside your spec limits you will see the red color here so with 3 mm tolerances we uh, ran another set of results and one thing you can notice is now everything is green and if we look at the numbers we get uh, about 40 percent less variation than we were getting at 5 and again it lists you all the co main contributors and uh, gives us their contribution so that's it uh, for the powerpoint presentation now i will just run a quick video and demo the model and the software this is how the Katia v5 version of 3dcs software looks like uh, here you can see uh, there's a Katia tree and there's a DCS storage which uh, which contains the DCS tree. It has uh, four parts wing, reference, engine and fuselage and if I expand the DCS tree it has uh, all those parts. It has moves and measurements and tolerances are included within the parts. 
this is the wing this is the reference part for the ground we have engine and we have fuselage just to make the model simple we just uh, uh, created wing as one part instead of assembly so this shows all the points were, which were used for a DCS model these include all the tolerance points, measurement points and move points if I do a nominal build that uh, builds the assembly in uh, running all the moves yeah this is the separated position so if I go through some of the moves which were used one was the first one was uh, a rigid body move first one was the rigid body move that's just uh, putting the wing to the fuselage using a rigid body and uh, the second one is uh, input FEA data that move is used to input the mesh and stiffness files we create using uh, DCS uh, stiff gen and after we import the mesh and stiffness files now these parts are compliant so we need to import a mesh and stiffness file for all the points we want to be compliant so the next move is uh, a clamp move which is we are clamping the wing to the fuselage using all three all these points if you open that move it will list all the object points and the target points you can see all the object points are wing in wing and the target are in fuselage and we have all bunch of options for uh, different type of clamps the next move is uh, apply gravity so we can select a part on which we want to apply gravity so after the wing is clamped to the fuselage now we apply gravity and the wing will deform according to its weight <coughs> So rest of the moves is we just apply forces on the wing according to the weight of the engine. We apply that at nominal position, min and max position. So these are the measurements which were used. You can see a tip displacement and uh, ground clearance. Measurements were used, just a couple of them. All of them were point based. If I open that, it says uh, the point on the engine. I open that it says the point on the engine and the target point it says from to so from is on the engine and to is on uh, the ground so if I do it again now you can see it's a point measurement from engine to the ground that gives us the value for the ground clearance and now we have tolerances we have linear tolerances and uh, the value is 5 mm value was assumed to be 5 mm and in fuselage we have two tolerances for two different scenarios
another thing you can do is this way too so another thing you can do is you can turn on and off the moves and uh, see min and max position of the engines so if i do nominal build and change turn on the main position it will move to the main if i do max then it will move to the max so the last thing i want to show is when i do similarly i can turn on and off the tolerances and it uh, results will run dep depending on which tolerances are on so we will go back to the nominal position and the last thing i want to show is that nominal build if i hit deviate we will see the wing moving according to the effect of gravity as well as according to the effect of uh, all the tolerances used so you can see the wing it's actually deforming